Morning, gents. Morning. Last exercise, we are now solving equations but without the use of flowcharts. Who found flowcharts really, you know, um, they took long to draw and you don't really want to bother yes. drawing them here? Yeah, most of you, I feel the same way. So basically we did flowcharts so you understand how an expression is built, then how to solve an equation using a flowchart, what are we actually doing. So the processes are the same, however the way we set our question out is completely different and you don't have to draw any flowcharts. Okay? But it was good that you understand what an equation is and how do we solve it. So basically we have to solve all these equations but we're not going to use a flowchart. So what, what did we actually do in a flowchart? Once we had an equation, what did we do to find the unknown? Uh, we, built, we built an expression and then we backtracked. Backtrack, right? How do we do backtracking? We do inverse operations. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I know that whatever my number is, so it's x, if I eight, add 8 to it, I get 13. So can I backtrack and minus, like undo 8 and get what my number was? So that's all we're going to do, opposite operations. However, we don't need to draw the flowchart. So these three are simple because there's only one thing that has been done. So we'll do these first and then when there's more than one operation, I'll tell you how to decide which one to undo first. Does that make sense? Can we put our pens down and have our eyes on the board please? Sitting up. Thank you. Now, so we know that our unknown number, if 8 is 8 is added to it, we get 13. So what's the inverse operation of adding 8? Minusing. Minusing it, right? Now, this is an equation. It has an equal sign, right? So that means the left-hand side is equal to right-hand side? So if I minus 8 on this side, is that right? No. Haven't I created an imbalance? Because this equation was a balance. One side was equal to the other. I've minus 8 from one side. What should I do to the other side so they're equal again? Minus so minus eight on one side. Yep. The same number. Yeah, yeah, you're saying it right. Say it. Exactly. Subtract the same number. So what was the number that I subtracted? Eight. So if I do minus eight on both sides, will they be balanced again? Yes. So. Is this true then? So we had right hand side equals the left hand side. Yep. Yes. A minus state, so minus state. Are they both balanced again? Yep. And that is why it's called the uh, balance uh, method. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great. Now, what happens to left hand side now? So, 8 take away 8 becomes 0. Now, whenever we solve an equation, I want you to use this imply sign. Because this already has an equal sign here, you can't just use equal sign. So this step implies that this one is correct. Then, what is 13 take away 8? 5. That is our answer. x equals 5. Simple? We can quickly check. So, x is 5. 5 plus 8. Will that give us 13? Yeah. Perfect. Does that make sense? Now, y take away 4 equals 3. What has been done to y? Minus 4. So basically you want to undo everything that has been done so you get y by itself because that's the solution. You want to find what y is. So y, 4 has been subtracted from y. To undo that, what's the inverse operation of subtracting 4? Plus 4. Now originally my equation was balanced. Now I've added 4 to one side. What should I do to the other? Add 4. Will they be balanced? Yes. Great. Make sense? What do I put here? Do I put an equal sign? No. This implies. So 4 take away 4 is 0. I basically just get y by itself. And 4 plus 3 is? 7. And we can quickly check. 7 take away 4 is 3. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. Easy? Yes. Now, 3z. What does that mean? 3 what z? 3 times z. 3 times z. So what has been done to z? It has been times by? 3. So what's the inverse of that? What's the inverse of that? Times in by 3? Well done. So if I divide this side by 3, what do I do to the other side? Same number. So let's do that. This implies z equals 21 divided by 3 is? Perfect. Any questions? Okay, now, 
These ones, more than one operation has been done. So four has been times and three has been added. How do we decide which one we undo first? So when we do inverse operations, we do it in the reverse order. So if I was to build this side, build this expression that's on the left hand side, 4x plus 3. What would you do to x first? Times or add? Times. Yep. Can we see that 4 was times 2x first and then the 3 was added? Yep. Yes. So 4 was done first and 3 was done second. Yes. So you'll get rid of the 3 first. So you do inverse operations in the reverse order. So you'll get rid of the 3 first. So this is plus 3. What's the inverse operation of adding 3? Take away 3. On both sides, because whatever we do one side of the equation, we have to do to the sex, uh, other side as well. Yes? Then, have we done anything to 4x? 4x no. there. 3 minus 3? Zero. 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 Equals 27 take away 3? 24. 24. So one step is done. But we still don't have x equals. We have 4x. 4x means 4 times, times x. x. What's the inverse of timesing by x? Dividing. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. So just x equals. What's 24 divided by 4? 6. Brilliant. That's it. Make sense? If I was to build this expression, what would I do to x first? I'll divide it by 5 and add 1. So what do I get rid of first? 1. Can I do minus 1? Yes. Should I do it to the other side as well? Yes. I must. Can we stop looking at the screen please? So, x over 5. What's 1 take away 1? 0. 3 take away 1? 2. Now, x has been divided by 5. What's the opposite of dividing by 5? Counting by 5. You guys are brilliant. So, 5 divided by 5 is 1. X equals? 10. Putting your answer in a box and make sure you don't forget that this implies simple. Okay? Yes. Any questions with two operations? Great. Now, what was done to X first? Plus, plus, plus 3 and then times by? 2. What do I get rid of first? Times 2. Times. What's the opposite of timesing? Divide. Should I do the same to the other side? Yes. yes. Must. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, so you're left with x plus 3. Do I need the bracket now? No. 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 You can put it there, but you don't need it. 16 divided by 2? 8. Now, so we can get rid of it. It's not needed, but it's not incorrect. x plus 3. What's the inverse of adding 3? Both sides? Yes. So what is x equal to? You guys are great. It's easy, isn't it? So if there's more than one operation, you see which order they were carried on. And then the last operation is inversed first. So we inverse the operations in the reverse order. What was done to x first? Plus 6 and then divided by? 4. So how do I get rid of the 4? Times 4. Exactly. Can I times by 4? Yes. So 4 divided by 4 will be? 1. What's 4 times 4? 16. 16. How do I get rid of plus 6? Take away 6. 6 from? 6. Both sides? Yes. So 6 take away 6 is 0. X equals? 10. 10. That's it. That's solving equations. There's nothing difficult about it, is it? So how do we solve an equation? Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. We basically undo all operations that have been done to our pronoun rule. Yeah. So the point is to get the unknown by itself and everything else on the other side. So we need to have x equals, y equals, z equals. And how do we do that? By doing inverse operations in which order? Reverse. Reverse. All good? Yes. Get on with your work.